Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with your with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great day so far. Look who's back. Matt Jarowski, digital reporter for News 8, is back on the Live Desk. And that can only mean one thing. We're going to be talking about his latest Sunday story. Matt, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Of course. And, you know, this story in particular, you know, it's about the, once again, we're talking about the shifting black bear population here in Michigan and how it's really kind of moving away from, or moving really more west, more south from the UP. Um, it's a story that has been getting a lot of attention. And instead of really focusing mainly and only on the shifting population where it's heading, you kind of took a different angle this time, focusing more so on the agricultural side and the impacts yeah. that these black bear population shifts kind of have on that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that story? Right, so last year I did a story on the shifting population, how uh, due to changes in some hunting regulations and to kind of boost that bear population, the DNR made some changes. And for 2012 to now, the bear population in the lower peninsula has effectively doubled. Um, and so because of that, uh, be the way the bears are, they need their, their own territory, they look their own for food sources, especially the males. And so that, that, that kind of forced them really to push further south into areas where we traditionally haven't seen them in recent decades, obviously centuries ago, before we were here, the bears were here. Um, but, but now we're finding that black bears are a bigger problem. And so when kind of diving further into that subject is, okay, if we're going to deal with more black bears here in West Michigan, who's going to be hit the hardest? And talking to talking to experts, uh, it really came away that farmers are the ones who are most likely going to have to deal with bears the most. So that's kind of what sparked this desire to really start looking more into this story. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, you know, you'd already tackled kind of what we were seeing as far as the population is concerned. And now you're kind of looking at sort of what's right. next, what sort of the impacts that this population shift is going to have. Right. So one of the farmers I talked to in the piece, his name is Ron Gillison. He's further north in Michigan. Um, he owns several properties and he also uh, owns a company that manufactures farm equipment. So he has a ton of connections throughout the state uh, and tons of experience in this field. And he kind of walked me through what he expects to see as the bears move further south. Right now, bear hunting is now legal in Muskegon, Oceana, and Nuevo counties for our demo. Um, so that territory that is slowly creeping further down and we're just seeing more and more bear sightings. Um, for Jillison in his main territory up in Benzie County, he first told me like he didn't see a bear until he saw one in the 1970s. He saw a couple in the 80s. But he said really the last 10 to 15 years, it's become a pretty major problem for him, really, as those changes were coming through. And so they're becoming a bigger problem in the northern part of the lower peninsula. And we expect to see that uh, play out, hopefully not as, as dramatic as they've seen it up there, but further south where he's regularly having bear, I know especially his cornfields are the biggest problem, but it's not just corn uh, that attracts bears, and it's <laughs> and the damage that they do isn't necessarily covered by the state. So we're talking some potential major financial loss. Right, no, I mean, that was going to be kind of my next question, Matt, is, you know, uh, you talked to uh, Gillison, that farmer, and, you know, he's got a lot of great quotes in the story that I highly recommend everybody, you know, taking a chance to really read and know the full story. It's up on our website, woodtv.com. But, you know, talking to him, I mean, what really are sort of those big worries? Because when we think about potentially seeing a black bear out in the wild or whether we're going for a hike or something like that, like that itself is already pretty scary before you even consider mm -hmm. the financial losses, losses or really all the other impacts that come with being a farmer and having to deal with these animals. Yeah. For, I want to explain something. What the DNR says too is uh, the, the numbers of the last couple of years have actually kind of stabilized a little bit. So we think that the bear population has kind of hit a bit of a sticking point, which I think the DNR would argue is a good thing. Um, as far as nuisance complaints, those have actually been slightly going down a little bit. I think part of the issue, especially as we first start dealing with these changes, is how people in areas that are not accustomed to bear interactions learn to adapt. And so when I talked to Cody Norton, the DNR, that's kind of what he he talked about too. The nuisance complaints uh, for this past year were the lowest they've been, I think, since 2016. Um, that, that exact data point is in the story. Um, so it's more just people learning how to kind of work and live alongside these bears. But for farmers, it takes it, but for farmers, we really should go a step further. So one of the issues that farmers deal with, like, or any person, 
if you can't just go and shoot a bear because we do have hunting regulations in place. Right. Uh, unless there's a specific threat to, to human life or property. Farmers, however, crops don't count as property. So if you've got bears living in your cornfields, you can't just go shoot it to you know stop them from from tearing down your corn, eating eating your corn, which for farmers is just money. Uh, so back in 2014, I know State Senator Ed McBroom, uh, who's a farmer himself, was kind of behind this big push for some legislation that uh, basically opened up some of those hunting rights and that uh, farmers who do have bears on their property can open their land up uh, to licensed hunters to come help handle those bears. And now we're looking to see if they can take that a step further. We know that there's no current legislation going, um, but but McBroom's office is looking into that, does want to talk about that. And the DNR, if you talk to them, they're looking at more non-lethal alternatives. And we, they do a lot of trapping and other things, catch and release, to try to keep things civil between the bears and farmers. But if you talk to Ron Gillison, it's not enough. Right, yeah, no, definitely a lot to be kind of keeping an eye on over the next couple of years, especially as we continue to monitor that shifting bear population. And before we let you go, Matt, I mean, I kind of wanted to circle this back around and kind of connect this story and the one you did last year, like you mentioned. And you also said that the DNR says that the bear population that we're sort of seeing kind of maintain in those nuisance complaints are uh, kind of stagnated or even really kind of, you know, being lower over the course of the years. Uh, I know there's going to be people watching this seeing shifting black bear populations and are going to assume, oh my gosh, you know, I might be seeing a black bear in downtown Grand Rapids before I know it. I mean, that's not really the case. I just kind of want people no. to re remind people about that, that this isn't something that, you know, it's not going to be tomorrow when we see black bears all across the city or anything like that. Right. I mean, bears aren't really urban creatures by default anyway. And every, not every year, but it seems like from time to time we get the story of a bear wandering into a suburb. I know I live in Walker out here in Walker. We had a, a famous uh, bear visitor for a good month back in, I think it was 2019. Um, so these things do happen. They will continue to happen. But even when we talk about the expanding bear population, it's much more extremely rural areas. They, they need a lot of land. They want a lot of land and food sources. So they're not going to find that in city or really even in, in suburban areas. So uh, at least for now, that's nothing to worry about. Well, I know I'm sure a lot of people are very happy to know that. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by and explaining your story. I do want to remind everybody one last time that it is up right now over on our website, woodtv.com. You can check out more on the shifting bear populations and also how it relates to agriculture here in Michigan. It's all over there as well. If you're watching us on Facebook, we've got links to it down in the description box and the comments section below. Matt, one last time, thank you so much for stopping by today. We really do appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks. Yep. Okay. We'll see you next week. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Pinarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.